Hey everyone, welcome to the Weeb Lounge. And this is the first video in a little series of videos I'm gonna do that are basically about me, myself, and I. Little tales and stories and such that hopefully entertain you as much as they have me through memory. Now, this one, the one we're gonna start with, how did I become an anime fan? How did I get into anime, period? Well, it's certainly not like anyone else. I guarantee you that. The time is the early to mid 90s. I'd say that like it's a long time ago because now it was. That's that is depressing. All right, well, I'm sitting at home and watching TV. You know, I'm, I'm in high school at this point. I'm like early high school or whatever. And I'm sitting at home and we, you know, we don't have cable. You know, the one time that we tried to get cable installed, the cable guy showed up. I'm living with my grandparents. The cable guy shows shows up and he's about to install cable for us. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to get cable. And the cable guy breaks out this big old drill to drill a hole through the wall to draw the cable through. And grandpa's like, what the hell are you doing with that? Um, I got to install the cable. I got to drill through the wall. The hell you're drilling through my wall. He kicked him right off the property. We never got cable. <sighs> I really wish we had cable back then. So basically, I've got a little bitty TV. I don't know, 19 inch TV, color TV, piece of crap. And it's just hooked up to a standard old school antenna. And one night, I'm just kind of browsing the channels. I am bored. You know, I got my video games. I got that other stuff. But I'm just, it's late at night. I'm bored. I'm flipping through channels. And I come across this one that's a little fuzzy. And I notice it's an animation. And I'm like, okay, well, what the heck is this? And I start watching it, even though, you know, you got, you got the old school lines going through a little bit of fuzz now and then. It's not the best picture, but it grabbed my attention. And I'm like, okay, this is an animation, but, it, you know, it's kind of dark. It's kind of bloody. It's hard to make out what anything, the you know, can't really hear it all that well and everything. But it's like, what the heck is this? You know, I, I'm enthralled. It's dark. It's bloody. There's cussing involved. And I'm like, wow, I, uh, this is normally not on a regular TV. Well, the next day, about the same time, I go to turn on that channel again. The ch channel's not there. Channel's not there. They don't exist. It's like it was a one-off. And I'm like, well, what the heck? You know, it turns out that this was a pirate TV station. Seriously, a pirate TV station. Just some random person who decided to broadcast something or whatever, and it happened to be this anime. And later on, I figured out that anime was Vampire Hunter D. And that's kind of what initially got me into it. It's this pirate channel throwing out an anime. It's like, cool, okay. Well, that kind of exploded, if you can't guess. Um, yeah. So fast forward a little bit, and I'm starting to get into more and more anime. One of my friends introduces me to Akira. Now, this, this guy, he's not a huge anime fan or nothing, but he saw Akira and really enjoyed it. I watched it, and I really enjoyed it. And that just kind of reinforced everything. You got Vampire Hunter D over on the Pirate Channel. You got, I watched Akira and I'm like, okay, there's something to this or whatever. This, th th these aren't cartoons. These aren't little kitty things. Th this is like adult entertainment and you know, it's mature entertainment. I really like this stuff. So I start digging into it a little bit. Now back then I ain't got no internet. There's no internet. I don't even know if I had a computer at this point. I probably did. Yeah, I think I did. But it was like a 486, 66 hertz, 33 hertz, 2 meg of RAM. It was, it was some old thing. But I started going around and around trying to find anime and everything that I want to buy, watch, or whatever, and I can, can't find anything. So I go outside <laughs> of my town. My town's not the dinkiest little thing, but it ain't very big either. Not too many options. So I head out to the next town over, and there's this South Lake Mall. Okay, that's in like Merrillville, Indiana. I go there and there's Suncoast Video. Some of you might know what Suncoast Video is. Most of you probably don't. <laughs> it's an old vi video store that sold VHS, Laserdisc, and I think towards the end it might have had DVDs and then died. It didn't last much longer into that. But I go over there and I'm browsing, I'm browsing, I'm browsing, and I come across this little section little tiny section that just says Japanese animation and it didn't say anime it didn't say Japan animation just Japanese animation and it, it's it's about take your average door in your house okay how big the door is that's how big the section was 
okay? Maybe even shorter, maybe six foot tall head heights or whatever. And it's all these VHS tapes, just random ass VHS tapes. And I have no idea what I'm looking at. I have no idea. And I noticed that these VHS tapes, they're like 30 bucks a pop, 30, $35 a pop. I'm like, wow, um, this is uh, like expensive. It's, it's all imported expensive stuff. And I'm like, do I really want to try to get into this or anything? So I'm sitting there looking at stuff and there's one that kind of struck my attention. All right, it, it, this one's old school. I found one called Project Echo some red-haired girl dragging away around this little blonde or whatever from robots or something and some busty girl dressed in purple flying around and stuff i don't know what the heck was going on it's Aiko, biko and seiko apparently that's their names and i'm like okay this looks entertaining i buy it i get home so the very first vhs videotape of any anime i ever bought was project Aiko. i get home i watch it and i'm like i'm not sure what i just watched but I know I liked it. <laughs> Project Echo is basically just super strong, super fast girl. And the other one has all these robots and stuff. And I think it was Seiko, the little blonde girl. Where she's just worthless. She's just kind of like she turned out to be like a princess from another planet or something. I don't know. But that's kind of spearheaded everything. And I would start slowly start to buy a few more, buy a few more. Until I got to a little show called Tenshi Muyo, the original OVAs. When I bought this show, I bought it all. I, I bought the first VHS, number one VHS. I watched it, and the very next day, I went back to Suncoast Video, an hour drive to this other town or so, and I bought the rest of the series in one go. It's now this this was like seven, eight, nine VHS tapes. I can't remember how much it was, but I know they were like thirty bucks a pop, and I just plopped it down. I was like, "Give me the Tenshibuya off OVA. I want it." And I think I accidentally bought one of the TV series, too. I can't remember, but I, I bought something else with it that I thought was it, and it wasn't. That that hooked me. Right then and there hooked. It, I, I didn't have Cartoon Network. I didn't have cable. I didn't have any of this other stuff. I saw a pirated broadcast of Vampire Hunter D, spent money on Project Echo on VHS, and it just spearheaded everything. So I end up getting Tenchi Muyo, but spending money that I probably shouldn't. Okay, hope I don't get in trouble for this, but I remember going to a local college as a visitor when I was in high school and I picked up this credit card application, right? And I was just like, well, I'm, I'm just gonna BS on this thing. <laughs> okay, it's fine. I just BS all over the place, turn it in. And here I am like 16 years old and they give me a $10,000 credit limit on a Discover card. Most of it got spent on anime. I took it, I even had a laser disc player. A laser disc player with, I rebought the whole Tenchi Muyo series, the TV series, El Hazard, Project Echo again, the Tenchi Muyo movie, any anime I could find on laser disc, I just gobbled up. And this was freaking awesome because I bought a laser disc player when laser disc was on its way out for good. So I would go to another place that was kind of close to that Suncoast video. They had this huge bin, huge bin of Laserdisc, just a whole bunch of random stuff. And a vast majority of it was anime. Nobody was buying anime. It wasn't popular back then. It was, it was, it was, it was a niche of a niche of a niche. That's how small it was back then. Nobody did anything with it. And so like in this big old bin was all this crazy amounts of anime for five bucks a pop. Now, if anybody out there is old enough to know Laserdisc, Laserdisc weren't cheap, all right? We're talking like 40, 50 bucks a movie or something. If you, Aliens Criterion Collection, when that thing came out of the box, that was $200. That was stupid, I bought it. I found it on sale half off, so it was still 100 bucks, but that's still stupid. But so I had VHS, I had Laserdisc, I ended up getting like this, this from where I worked, they closed down. They had this big display case thing. I grabbed that when they closed down and I put it in my room and it just lined up with VHS tapes all over the place. El Hazar, Wanderers, Battle Athletes, Nadesico, Evangelion, you name it, I had it. At least what was popular back in the day and as it went on. So needless to say, um, I got my start really uh, soon. And while this is all going down, I'm dealing in comic books. I'm dealing in Magic the Gathering cards. I'm dealing in Star Wars toys. You know, in middle school, I started uh, my own first little comic company called Maximum Chaos, and I did little comic shows. There. It didn't turn out to be much of anything, but it spearheaded everything, and eventually that got transformed into Anime Chaos. 
Now, if you go to AnimeChaos.com right now, it forwards you to the Weeblounge.com. But it used to be an anime production art retail site. Yes, actual art, the actual cell work that was used in the anime. I evolved from watching a pirated broadcast of Vampire Hunter D all the way to being the biggest online retailer of anime production art in the world at that time. And my God, <laughs> uh, it was a trip because that anime chaos, I didn't make much money from that because I collected anime cells. I collected anime artwork. And even though I had this massive amount coming in for stock and reselling and shipping all over the world, I kept a lot. I kept more than I should, and I didn't make all that much. I, I made a living, but I didn't make, I could make, I could have made, don't do what you deal, or don't, yeah, that whole notion thing, because anyone in that, the anime production art collection hobby, and they're still around, you can still get some stuff, but yeah, people will tell you it's it's more expensive than like a cocaine addiction or something. It, it, it's bad. It's really bad, and believe me, it was. I, I fueled my own demise there but that's pretty much how I got into anime it started out with that pirate broadcast all the way to me being an, uh, a cell a cell Ganga Doga dealer which is Selga Ganga Doga the, the hand-drawn stuff and eventually taking that to shopping mall Japan which is a story for another day and which eventually became the weeb lounge and yeah, <laughs> if you guys uh, know what it's like to have to physically go to a store, buy a VHS tape to watch your latest show, and it's usually about uh, a couple of years probably after its original broadcast, a year or two, you had to actually wait that long. There's no fan subs, there's no fan dubs, there's none of that. Then the pain was real. <laughs> like, you know, Cartoon Network didn't have Adult Swim. They didn't have any of that stuff up for years after that. Oh, man. So that's some memories right there. That's how I got into anime. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button. I really appreciate it. Growing channel. I got more videos and stuff about me to come. More videos about Genshin Impact, about gacha games, about anime reviews, first impressions. I got a lot on my table. We will see you in one of those videos to come.